Three-minute eggs coverage of the visual arts is supported by Wet Paint, an independent art supply store since 1976, serving Twin Cities artists and the world beyond. Learn more at wetpaintart.com. I'm Matt Pikin, and this is Three Minute Egg from Art World 2010. I'm at the Thorpe Building. We're going to meet some artists who are known, a couple who may not be, and there are way too many artists about Art World than we could possibly see in one episode. It's the largest open studio visual art exhibition anywhere in North America. Let's get a little slice of it on this edition of Three Minute Egg. It basically started from an idea of my interest in uh, the surrealist painters, just taking that them and sort of coming up with some sort of platform, some sort of uh, uh, subject matter uh, that I could apply something to. I moved from canvas to wood um, and largely because I, uh, I wanted some I, I wanted to build out and for these three-dimensional pieces here um, it uh, everything starts with a sketch. The sketch gets scanned and then it gets put into a, a page that has grids on it and then I use uh, that basically becomes my map of, uh, of of taking the image and and knowing where uh, when I when I can transfer it to uh, uh, some plywood or uh, you know uh, the plywood work surface. I think things have kind of come full circle in the sense that now I'm kind of working on flat work again. <laughs> so when I was a student, I spent a lot of time studying the figure, um, but that didn't really manifest into any completed works. It was. But I, that was one of the things I found most interesting, was just the, that process. And then after that, for a long time, my work became more kind of a process experimentation with no representation at all. And the first thing I do is put down masking tape. And then using a drywall square and an X-Acto blade, I cut it into little thin strips. And then I remove every other strip and then I paint an image. And then I remove the rest of the strips, and when the paint is dry, I put down more masking tape, cut with the X-Acto blade, to be able to remove strips of tape over spaces where there's no paint. And so then I paint another image without painting over the image, that, you know, the strips that I painted. And then I do it a third time. So these, there's three images in each of these. For some reason, I would never allow myself to just do a simple image, you know? Like, how can you do that? <laughs> I've always been fascinated with, uh, with the, the look of vintage imagery, the fact that you can look at something and instantly kind of place it for a time. So for the last few years, I've been working out this problem of trying to figure out um, if I could work from old photos to create paintings that may be read in the same way. And I think a huge draw for me is the fact that they're, they're both nostalgic and kind of um, appalling depending on who you are. Increasingly I'm doing more with selective cropping and now I'm actually even working with diptychs too where I put two images that have nothing to do with each other hmm. together so that there's a kind of a narrative that you read between the two. You try to, people are artists are always trying to new, look for new things. And for me, the, the new, in a lot of ways, is something that I don't know and I don't understand. Uh, you know, I was, I was born in 1978, so people ask me all the time, why do you do this 50s stuff? Like, what's wrong with you? You know, get, get with the times, man. Uh, but, you know, I, why is it that I can look at these images of really cool old things and somehow I feel like I know them, you know? I think that's, there's something very American about that. <laughs> 